Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I clean up my field recordings. So I've actually done a video about this a couple years ago. Actually the same location, the similar sorts of sounds. I got this comment, living near a city sucks for recording nature sounds. I brought my zoom to forests and lakes around here on several occasions only to realize that there's constant traffic noise in the background and trains and planes and construction, even when your naked ears think it's pretty silent. And so I have the same situation. A couple just tips off the top of my head about how to do this, basically early morning or late evening or even in the middle of the night. That's when you're gonna get the most kind of quiet, calm ambience. But depending on where it's going to be used, that might not actually be appropriate. Sometimes you actually want the sound of construction. You actually want the sound of a busy city. But if you want nature sounds, um, you're, you're gonna have to do it like really early in the morning or really late at night. And also record a lot more than you need so that you can chop it down uh, into usable loops or smaller segments that you can actually fit together and make work. So that's kind of what we're gonna look at today. So here is that field recording session that I did in the last video. I'll just play these. The most difficult ones here to manage are these super quiet, uh, really calm ones like this one here. And that does sound quite a bit like what it actually sounded like in the, in the actual space. As I was sitting there, there was sort of this constant like hum of the city of like a slight breeze in all of these trees and all of the leaves moving. Uh, there's a couple points where the wind picked up and um, you know, there's branches hitting each other and there's sticks breaking and there it, it's, it's a quiet environment, but it is a very noisy environment. There's lots of things going on and it's up to you to decide how much of that is useful. Are you just using it for your own um, music or film work or do you want to sell this to someone or do you want uh, someone to use this in their films? You know, sometimes that stuff's useful if you want it to be like, just long capture of of that moment in time. But for me, I think I want these to be kind of uh, universally useful, these to be useful in not just my own work. So what we just heard was after editing and after a bit of processing. So things have changed slightly in the way that I work since uh, the last time. Um, the last one, I think I had noise reduction, EQ, channel operations, MS, um, processing, maybe a couple other things. In these ones, I'm not doing any denoising, but I am using the Ozone 8 equalizer with slightly different EQ settings, especially on this band 7. So they're all in roughly the same spot, but this band 7, which is a band shelf shape, is moving around. And you don't have to use this EQ. You can use re-EQ, you can use the Tone Boosters EQ, you can use Fab Filter. I liked this one because of this band shelf shape. I thought it was it was really effective, sort of as a noise reduction tool. This recorder or this space that I was in, it kind of had the, these common problems in each location. And uh, this was, well, this just had a better sound than using a bell shape. I'm gonna go through all of that later on. And the other thing that I did here was using uh, Klanghelm's VMT Deluxe and just balancing the left and right, because sometimes when you're in these locations, maybe on the right side there's, there's a little bit more traffic compared to the left side, or uh, just the angle where it sounds right in the headphones at the time isn't quite balanced. You don't get any control over left and right um, with when just a single knob of control here. 
you, you adjust by placement. But in a lot of these locations, it's like you can't be straight at it. Like here, I this is as close as I could get to this location. The left microphone was picking up a little bit more than the right, and so it needed some adjustments. So these two knobs adjust for each of the um, each of the locations. You can see that the left trim and the mostly the right trim is just adjusting, mostly up, sometimes down. Depends on where I was going with it. Um, as well, I'm also doing in MS mode. I tend to like a little bit of a side channel boost, and I'm also monoing pretty much everything below 80. Um, or this is that's just my personal choice. I I prefer hearing it like that. So we're gonna go over to another project, and here we have the. Uh, just one of those locations. This is the raw file, full length, right? And so it's synced right here. There's no effects on it right now. Okay, so up to that point, it's been noisy. There's lots of little bumps and stuff. That's just me adjusting the chair, sitting down. Sometimes the uh, the headphone cable bumps into the tripod where the recorder is. Um, so all that stuff would be taken out. First of all, I would just trim that. So we don't need any of that. From here on, let's see. Pretty much up to that point has been good other than maybe 10 seconds here or so. I'm feeling a bit of more movement in my left ear than on the right. Um, so you could trim that out or maybe some, some of the EQ and um, things like that would help with this. But before we do that, I would probably switch to a different view. So right now I just have it on a normal, um, the normal waveform view, but this is something that's new since the last time I did a video on mastering field recordings. Um, we have spectral view, uh, spectrogram view inside of Reaper. So that would be in the view menu and you go to uh, peak display settings. Where is that? Peak display settings and change the mode from peaks to, um, I like the spectrogram and peaks. Uh, and if this is the first time enabling it, that's gonna take, um, it, it could take a minute uh, to process all that audio because these are these are actually really long files. Uh, this was about six minutes or so, and we're going to cut it down to maybe two to three minutes of usable kind of loopable um, bits. Also going to boost up the level. And by the way, that's the same as holding shift and pressing the up arrow. That's going to move it in like one dB, quarter dB increments, something like that. Uh, up and down arrows will do that. So there's the spectrogram and the waveform view. We could also switch it right to spectrogram. And because this is a stereo file, we have two spectrograms. Uh, there's also spectral peaks, but that's not really going to show us anything in this sort of file, which is, you know, mostly quiet noise, continuous. There's not really any pitches here. Spectrogram. You can double click to reset. You can drag this around. There's some special events here. Let's uh, see what that is here. Okay, so there's a plane going overhead. We all know that sound. There's a truck. So in this case, this is a section where I could probably just cut all of that. And something I like to do to just to make sure that it's seamless. So I'll enable looping in the transport bar. So what I want to do is play 
and skip the time selection. So I want to play from somewhere before my loop points or my time selection, and we're going to skip the section and jump right to the end just to see if we have a good uh, loop point. Um, so I have a shortcut for that. I use Shift Command Spacebar. Let's try that again. I can kind of hear when that's changing. Let's go right to here. Honestly, it's a little difficult because I have a road right here on my left. And so often when I'm playing this, I don't know if I'm hearing um, the sound of the recording or the sound of outside. Uh, something that can help is just to crank it up really loud. So I'll just turn up the track a little bit. OK, so let's go into the action list. Let's look at that shortcut. I have a custom version of this. There is uh, a play and skip time selection built in action. Super useful, but I actually um, have one that's slightly different. Um, it's just going to jump back a little bit from the uh, from where I start playback, uh, just to give me like a little like one second lead in sort of thing. And I just make sure that it's going to um, save the edit cursor position. So move cursor left configured seconds. Um, that's an SWS thing. So you go into the extensions menu and you go to the command parameters. Yeah. So I have that on one second. Now I will um, enable ripple editing, and I'll just cut this. And so let's hear that now. So it's pretty clean, actually. But actually, right before, I can still hear the plane. So I'm just going to cut that. And again, it, ripple editing is on. It's going to truncate that. And let's try a little fade. Yeah, so that's pretty clean now. There's another thing here. There's quite a lot of low end rumble right there. Feel it there as well. So let's let's uh, go to here and jump back and skip this time selection. Now I can kind of feel something in my ears. Not really. These don't have really good low end, um, but you can kind of feel like a pressure change. Okay, so there was a low, low end rumble uh, in real time, not in the recording, I think. Man, it's so tricky to tell sometimes. All right, so I'm just gonna cut that. And so, okay, and at the end, there's definitely some like noise. So I'm just gonna trim it from there. I would actually go through this and probably listen to the whole thing again. I bet there's something here. But for now, let's just leave this section of the processing here. I'm going to make a time selection around these, and then I'm going to press O. And that action is set time selection to items. Uh, I have it on O. I don't think that's the default, but it's something that I'm using pretty much every day. Super helpful. Now let's add in some effects. So I'm going to use uh, Klanghelm VOMT Deluxe. I love this one for balancing the stereo image and for uh, doing some MS processing as well as the mono maker. So let's go to, let's just jump to any point in here. Okay, and I'm gonna look at the meters uh, on the left here and ad probably adjust the right trim just a little bit to balance this out a little bit so it doesn't sound kind of lean to the left. Bypass. 
on. All right, and we'll go into the MS mode and just give it a, I like a 2 dB bump. You could do less, you could do more. Well, let's just give this a try. It's a fairly subtle effect, but it kind of widens it. And uh, because we're using an XY capsule on the microphone, um, it's it's kind of a narrow um, but phase coherent signal. Our own hearing is more like a binaural uh, recording. So there's a physical barrier between your left and right ear, you know, your head, all the squishy bits inside. When we are recording with XY, there's limited differences between the left and right. And by using the trim and just giving it a little boost, we're making it sound a little bit wider. Anyway, I find that doing that also kind of brings out some things that I dislike about this, uh, about this recording. So um, I've been using the Ozone EQ because it has that band shelf mode, but there are a lot of other EQs that have that. Well, let's first look at the low end. Uh, I'm gonna set this on a high pass. And uh, we use the we use the uh, digital flat mode, and seeing how far up we can go with this, it's unlikely we'll go above 100. Um, but if we do cut up to about 100, we will take out a lot of the um, you know the city rumble and stuff we don't want. I think on this recording, we can cut up to 134 without losing anything, without you know, losing the sound of the space. You know, this water doesn't generate a lot of low end. Um, so anything that's uh, coming in here is just going to be noise we don't want. So let's um, also go over to the uh, band five. The number of the band doesn't really matter, but somewhere in the upper mid range. Um, I find that with this recorder, I usually need something in like the 400 range and also between like 1K and 5K can sound a little bit weird. Let's check this out. Right there is pretty sizzly. Um, Maybe this is not something you actually want to have in there. I think it sounds a little bit better with uh, with that taken out, but let's uh, let's first look at this one area here. There's something at two point four I really dislike. Um, let me compare the different uh, shapes here. There's normal peak mode, proportional cue, and and proportional cue just uh, kind of changes that corner. So it's it's going to be kind of a wider cue when it's not a big cutter boost, uh, but when it is, it gets tighter as well. Right to this one. And then there's band shelf, and I really like this one because I can affect a wider area and do a little bit less, less EQ moves. It's similar to if you adjust the uh, the bands on a uh, multi-band compressor, uh, the band gains on that. You could use re-xcomp uh, re for this. All right, so right there, we're we're like frying a steak along with like boiling potatoes.
And now that sounds like rain on uh, some, some pavement and there's like um, maybe plant pots that are filling up with water. That's the stuff that I hear. Let's try cutting it a little bit. So I find that really kind of calms down the sound and makes it more easy to listen to. Um, yeah, I, I just prefer that sound. Let's look at the lower mids now. And gain matched before and after. I find it's a little more natural sounding. It doesn't quite sound like, a, you know, a small recorder. It sounds a little bit nicer. So yeah, that's pretty much all I do with processing these. The majority of the effort goes into going through and finding noises to remove. I'm not doing a lot of um, spectral editing. Uh, that's where you would make a time selection and you go to uh, spectral edits, add spectral edit to item. I find that these don't work all that well. I just find that you just get too many artifacts. It's a little bit too noticeable. There's a little click or something. I find it much faster or more effective to just either take a section from another part and replace it by doing, oops, turn off that. Take a section like that, replace it. You know, I find that to be much more effective than going through and removing a little click or something like that. So I do have Isotope RX. I haven't been taking my field recordings and putting them into Isotope RX uh, recently because I find that certain things are actually more difficult or more time consuming. The majority of this I can do inside of Reaper. I love having a real time effects chain. Um, so I can constantly tweak these, and in RX you would have to commit all of these effects and, you know, have multiple versions if you ever wanted to change something. It might be cool to print my my channel operations, but then be, not being able to adjust my EQ is something I can't really handle. I, I need those things. It's great for spot cleanup, for copying and pasting certain parts of the frequency spectrum from one place to another. Not having the real-time effects chains, not having automation is a real pain for me. Uh, as well, sometimes I need the video in there at the same time, you know. I can't shorten a file and keep it in sync with my video files, so that's another pain. Um, I really like having, um, you know, all of my field recordings from one session or one, one day in one project and then using automation. I'll show you the automation lanes where I'm changing that EQ, usually using latch preview mode. So I would um, take my time selection, snap it to the items, and then take my EQ, play it back, go into latch preview punching in automation mode, okay, I like that. I like that, and then punch out, and all that automation has been written in here. So not having that in Isotope RX is kind of a big downside. But long story short, if I can just cut around something, that's what I do first. If I need that particular piece of audio, but there's some bad noise in there, I might open up the, uh, the file in Isotope RX and clean that up. I kind of lose the flexibility of keeping it all in real time, non-destructive in Reaper. So to summarize all these tips, if you need a quiet ambience, go early in the morning or late at night when there's fewer people around, less traffic. Record more than you need a two or three minute loop. Then you need to record six to eight minutes long um, just to give yourself lots of clean stuff that you can remove traffic or people or anything um, just using really quick 
loop-based editing. Check your loop points. Um, use that uh, playback, skip time selection action. Use that a lot. Get fast with the ripple editing modes. If you need to, read it at the zero crossings. Uh, really helps uh, making sure that if you're going to edit something that's uh, going into a positive voltage, when you end that edit, it's going to continue into a positive voltage so you don't get a pop or, an, or a click or anything. And if you still get one, it's usually acceptable to add in a bit of a crossfade there. Then when it comes to processing, um, I like to do any channel operations, balancing the left and right, maybe doing some mid-side processing, uh, monoing the lows. Um, that's kind of a personal preference of mine to mono the lows a little bit. Then I move on to EQ, keep it simple, just cut the lows a little bit, uh, find how high up you can go without sacrificing anything. Lower mid cut and kind of a wide cut um, in the mid range. So anywhere from 1.5 up to 5K and maybe another sort of narrow, uh, but not too extreme dip um, up above that, maybe at 6K or 8K or something like that. That's going to depend on the location, the microphones uh, and the placement. You know, that's what I ended up with for this. And so whatever you have might be a little bit different. If it's going to be used in a film, it's going to be way back in the background. No one's really going to hear this soloed besides yourself. Don't go crazy with it. If you record for six minutes, don't spend 80 minutes editing it. Uh, that's not really worth it. All right, so I hope these tips have helped. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.